Hello, everyone. My name is Amanda, and I'm delighted to present this course prepared by Tracy Brown for GBRI, Moms Going Green, Embracing Sustainability Before, During, and After the Baby. Pregnancy is a beautiful experience, not just for mothers, but for fathers as well. It is the start of an incredible journey where every mother shares one of the most unique and special types of bonding and love that exists. Leading a sustainable lifestyle takes on a new dimension when you're pregnant. It's about creating a safe and healthy world for your bundle of joy to grow and thrive in. But how do you do it? Join us as GBRI Senior Research Associate and mom, Tracy Brown, explores this topic in depth. Every year when we celebrate our birthday, we celebrate the day that we came into this world. If you think about it, each of our journeys started in our mother's womb. Isn't it extraordinary for a woman to give birth to another life? <laughs> we certainly think it is. This course, brought to you by GBRI, and I believe, is dedicated to all mothers out there who have helped us reach where we are today. This course is part of GBRI's Change Begins With Me campaign, where we have partnered with I Believe, a nonprofit organization, to do our share in educating about things that matter to us, our communities, economy, and our planet. As part of the campaign, we create educational courses that are also aligned with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. GBRI, as many of you may already know, is an AIA education provider and a USGBC education partner. Our mission is to make sustainability, health and wellness available and affordable to everyone around the world. We have hundreds of sustainability courses surrounding the topics of energy, water, lead, net zero buildings, green schools, energy modeling, daylighting, BIM, health and wellness, to just name a few. In addition, we have lead and well AP exam study materials. Listed here are the course objectives. This course will educate you about things that matter during and after pregnancy, including tips and strategies. Understand the importance of health, wellness, and sustainability as it relates to pregnancy and motherhood. Identify health, wellness, and eco-friendly tips and strategies during and after pregnancy. Analyze and learn strategies for a sustainable lifestyle for your baby. Learn from mothers who have successfully integrated sustainability into their daily lives. And apply the lessons learned and spread the knowledge to others and be a part of UN 2030 Agenda. Let me take this opportunity to introduce the author of this course. Tracy E. Brown is an eco-friendly journalist educator, and content strategist who studied communication and information at the University of Tennessee, where she also conducted research on the effect of fungus gnats on farm crops. She prides herself on making sure that consumers get the real deal about the produce they choose to feed their families and works tirelessly to uncover the real meaning of going green. As a writer and a reporter for over 10 years, her credits include London's Facetheory.com, WBIR Channel 10 News, PBS, Pregnancy and Newborn Magazine, Duke University, and American Airlines. She is currently based in Atlanta, Georgia. As I mentioned earlier, I will be presenting this course prepared by Tracy. Tracy has always been a bit cautious of added chemicals or processed foods in her diet. So when she learned she was expecting her first child, she went into a tailspin about the way she could eliminate these harmful elements from entering the placenta and affecting her baby's development. Today, I'm here to share Tracy's research and findings to help you learn the best ways to ensure you have a healthy nine months and beyond. Listed here is the course agenda. Under Section 1, we will go over some stats from around the world, 
plus some facts about pregnancy that we should all know. We will explore sustainable, healthy, and safe strategies and tips and techniques throughout Section 2 and 3. Maternal mortality is unacceptably high. In the last 100 years, steps have been taken to help reduce the mortality rate of pregnant women. However, there is still a high rate of pregnancy complications and losses each year. The goal of the World Health Organization, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and the United Nations is to ensure a healthy pregnancy for the mother and the child. According to the World Health Organization, about 830 women die from pregnancy or childbirth-related complications around the world every day. 99% of all maternal deaths occur in developing countries. Almost all of these deaths occur in low-resource settings, and most could have been prevented. Did you know that one in every 16 women dies a pregnancy-related death in developing countries? The high number of maternal deaths in some areas of the world reflects inequities in access to health care services and highlights the gap between rich and poor. The majority maternal deaths occur in developing countries. More than half of these deaths occur in sub-Sahara Africa, and almost one-third occur in South Asia. More than half of maternal deaths occur in fragile and humanitarian settings. Seventy percent of all maternal deaths occur due to bleeding, infection, or preeclampsia. As you can see from this map, maternal mortality is higher in women living in rural areas and among poorer communities. Only 34% of rural women in developing countries have access to prenatal care, as opposed to 67% in urban areas. Teenage pregnancy is another issue. In developing countries, the rate of teenage pregnancy is 7.3 million per year. Two million babies are born to mothers under the age of 14. The risk of maternal mortality is highest for adolescent girls under 15 years old, and complications in pregnancy and childbirth is a leading cause of death among adolescent girls in developing countries. Teenage pregnancy is an issue in America as well. According to the CDC, in 2014, a total of 249,078 babies were born to women ages 15 to 19 years old. According to the World Health Organization, young adolescents face a higher risk of complications and death as a result of pregnancy than older women. Another problem is malnutrition. Maternal undernutrition, common in many developing countries, leads to poor fetal development and higher risk of pregnancy complications. Together, maternal and child malnutrition account for more than 10% of the global burden of disease. On one end, we have malnutrition, and on the other, we have maternal obesity. Every year, an estimated 15 million babies are born preterm before 37 completed weeks of gestation. And this number is rising. A new study has found a possible link to women who are overweight during pregnancy having children with autism. Researchers from Central South University in China carried out a meta-analysis combining findings from independent studies to investigate this link that involved 200,000 people. Obese women with high blood sugar levels were nearly 47% more likely to have a child with autism compared to normal weight mothers. The results were published in the Journal of Autism and Developmental Disorders. The researchers have stated one theory is overweight women have high blood sugar levels, which may have a detrimental impact on the development of the brain. On the slide, you were looking at a chart that shows healthy weight gain during pregnancy. You don't have to write this down. The source is also noted on the slide. 
Additionally, the PDF of this presentation is available to download for free. The good news is that cost-effective care for mothers is increasing, and the medical knowledge is now available to help aid in a healthy nine months. As a result, between 1990 and 2015, maternal mortality worldwide dropped by about 44%. Seventy-seven percent of all pregnant women living with HIV globally received medicines that prevent transmission to their babies in 2015. Seventy-three percent of deliveries were attended by a skilled birth attendant in 2013. Birth defects, which are commonly found during the first trimester, testing range from blindness to spinal cord disorders and affect millions of children each year. Luckily, now with the recommendations to take a prenatal vitamin containing essential nutrients for the growing baby, that number has decreased significantly. Improving maternal health was one of the eight Millennium Development Goals adopted by the international community in 2000. As I mentioned before, since 1990, the number of maternal deaths worldwide has dropped by 44%. This concludes Section 1. On the screen, you were looking at the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Between 2016 and 2030, as part of the Sustainable Development Agenda, the target is to reduce the global maternal mortality ratio to less than 70 per 100,000 live births, with no country having a maternal mortality rate of more than twice the global average. All right, now that we are aware of some facts about pregnancy, Let's explore sustainable, healthy, and safe strategies, tips, and techniques throughout Section 2 and 3. To help you have a healthier pregnancy as possible, let's investigate the best way for you to care for your growing child. Let's start with the first trimester. You might not even look pregnant yet. The first trimester is considered your first 13 weeks of pregnancy. The important work is being done on your baby, including forming their organs, brain, and spinal cord. Start making changes now. Though you may not even look pregnant yet, your body is busy doing the hard and most important work during the first trimester. Your first trimester is considered your first 13 weeks of pregnancy. Your hormone levels are quickly changing, and your body begins to work of making the placenta, an organ that will begin to carry oxygen and nutrients independently to your baby. All of this growing and changing can explain just exactly why you feel so tired in the first three months. All of your baby's organs are made during this time, including its brain and spinal cord. It's imperative that you take the steps now to ensure a proper growing environment for your baby. Let's go on and examine just what you can do to give your baby the best start. On the screen, you can see some essentials you need for your first trimester. According to the National Institutes of Health, women should take a daily multivitamin made especially for pregnancy. Since neural tube defects occur in the first 28 weeks of pregnancy, it's important for a woman to begin taking these supplements prior to conceiving. A good prenatal vitamin will have enough iodine, calcium, folic acid, and iron to help support the mother and baby as they grow. DHA is an omega-3 fatty acid that's found in salmon and other types of fish and aids in healthy brain development. Studies on lutein during pregnancy is a new concept but is quickly being considered as important for pregnant mothers as DHA once was. Lutein aids in proper eye development, 
You can find lutein naturally in eggs, leafy greens like kale, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts. If you've got morning sickness, you may find it's hard to keep your prenatals down. If you're having trouble, try taking a gummy vitamin, which is tastier to swallow, or try switching up the time of day when you usually take your vitamin, depending on whether you're having morning sickness in the a.m. or the p.m. hours. During pregnancy, your diet can be a tricky thing to navigate. It's made even more complicated by morning sickness and food aversions that cause you to not want to eat anything at all. When you do summon enough energy to find the fridge, there are certain things you should look for, and these include foods that are high in nutritional value. This means looking for foods that aren't processed and don't come from a box. Foods that have high nutritional value are fruits and vegetables, proteins, fiber, and good fats. They allow your body's energy level to stay level throughout the day, and they work to fight off fatigue, high blood pressure, and diabetes. You want to shoot for five servings of fruit and veggies. Frozen veggies are a great option if your favorites are out of season. Per day, and 10 to 12 ounces of safe for pregnancy fish a week, like salmon or shrimp. Nuts are also high in omega-3 and omega-6 and serve as a great snack. Try whole grain wheat bread in place of sugary substitutes for your carbs and make sure to look for items that contain good-for-you vitamins and minerals, especially vitamins A and C. Try to eat breakfast every day to start your body out with the energy it needs to grow a human and handle your workday. Try to think about breakfast as eggs, berries, and yogurt, as opposed to sugary cereals, so you pack in all the nutrition you can. If you're feeling nauseous, try adding ginger to your diet. Just make sure you clear the amount with your doctor. Finally, make sure you are drinking 8 ounces of water every 2 hours or so. You'll want to shoot for 8 glasses of water a day. This will keep you hydrated and ensure your body doesn't fill up on calories that don't matter. Your daily calorie count will be adjusted depending on if you're over or underweight, but healthy weights usually shoot for about 340 extra calories in the second trimester and 450 calories in the third trimester. Despite all the wonderful food out there, you'll constantly be bombarded with bad choices. While pregnant, you'll need to choose to avoid several items you were used to consuming pre-pregnancy. You should avoid alcohol, which is responsible for fetal alcohol syndrome, a syndrome that can have immediate and lifelong repercussions for your growing baby. You'll also want to avoid nicotine and limit caffeine to under 200 milligrams while pregnant. You should also avoid unpasteurized products like some cheeses, juice, and milk that haven't been properly tested. You'll also want to avoid raw seafood like sushi or shellfish. Make sure to order your steaks and pork well done to avoid contracting salmonella or toxoplasmosis. The same goes for your eggs and your chicken. You'll also want to watch out for deli meat. Never eat raw deli meat or hot dogs without first cooking the meat. When uncooked, these products may contain a dangerous bacteria known as listeria that can harm your growing baby. The Food and Drug Administration also advise against eating swordfish, shark, king mackerel, or tilefish because of the high mercury content in those fish. Some herbs and tea can upset your body's natural balances and should be avoided during pregnancy unless cleared by your doctor. If you've got a condition like hypertension, thyroid disorder, or diabetes, you'll need a nutrition plan from your doctor. Going organic for pregnancy is a great option because it limits the amount of toxins, like pesticides and insecticides, that cross the placenta and make their way to your growing baby. You'll want to find products that have been approved by the United States Department of Agriculture, or USDA, which only certifies products that don't contain any ingredients that aren't agriculturally made, like parabens or phthalates.
In the grocery store, you may see an organic label and think it's great for you, but all organic labels are not created equal. Organic goods are grown and produced with no chemical fertilizers, antibiotics, pesticides, or growth stimulants. To carry the organic seal, the USDA ensures the product is made up of at least 95% organic content. Made with organic goods contain at least 70% organic ingredients. There is no USDA seal to put on these items. Some organic material goods may contain less than 70% organic ingredients. Natural goods means they are not synthesized or chemically altered. They contain no artificial colors or flavors and have no synthetic additives to aid their production. So, going truly organic requires you be an informed consumer. Buying food from your local farmer's market or directly from the farm through co-op experiences is a great way to know your food is coming straight from the supplier. In today's world, consumers can also buy everything from their baby clothes to their beauty products, including organic deodorant. There are products you should always buy organic, whether or not you're pregnant. These include the list of the Dirty Dozen. The Dirty Dozen is a group of 12 fruits and vegetables that, when tested, contained the most number of pesticides. Fruits and veggies in the group soak up additional pesticides. Some have porous skin that doesn't protect them from pesticides. Others are sprayed heavily with pesticides so they'll grow into harvest. 47% of these fruits and veggies had at least 17 detectable pesticides on them. Here we have the list. Peaches, apples, sweet bell peppers, celery, nectarines, strawberries, cherries, and pears. Imported grapes, spinach, lettuce, and potatoes. As I noted on the previous slide, 47% of these fruits and veggies had at least 17 detectable pesticides on them. Why is this bad? Pesticides have been linked to hormone disruption, nerve problems and neurological disorders, reproductive problems, and cancer. To balance the dirty dozen, there are the clean 15. These items with the least pesticide residue are onions, avocado, frozen sweet corn, pineapples, mango, asparagus, sweet peas, frozen and look for GMOs, kiwi fruit, bananas, cabbage, broccoli, papaya, eggplant, cauliflower, and grapefruit. Now that we're all good with nutrition, let's talk about staying fit during pregnancy. One of the most important ways to keep up your energy throughout pregnancy is to exercise. Exercise can help ward off diabetes, heart disease, and high blood pressure. Try walking at least 30 minutes a day, 3 to 5 times a week, to get more blood pumping into your heart and ward off fatigue. Yoga is another great activity for stretching and relaxing the body and mind. Just make sure you do a pregnancy-safe routine. If you were a runner or heavy exerciser pre-pregnancy, just check with your doctor about what level you should stay at during pregnancy. Although there's no concrete proof that high-intensity exercise harms your baby, cutting down the intensity of your training makes sense. There are some activities that you won't be able to do while you're pregnant. You'll want to avoid riding a bike, ice skating, roller skating, skiing, and horseback riding, or any other activity where you may fall and hurt yourself or the baby. If you were an athlete before, clear all routines with your doctor. During pregnancy, your mental health is very important. To aid in this, you want to stay on your prenatal vitamins and consider having your placenta encapsulated to take in vitamin form. Remember, hormones are moving in all sorts of different directions during and after pregnancy. This can cause you to feel irritable or to cry a lot. Some of this is normal, 
But if you are feeling blue and it's affecting your ability to care for yourself or your baby, you may have the baby blues or postpartum depression. Though your spouse may not understand, they are real and dangerous conditions. Both causes need to be treated by a doctor. If you or anyone you may know may be feeling overwhelmed by the birth of a baby, visit marchofdimes.org for a list of symptoms and treatment options. Moms aren't the only ones having a baby. The spouse's life is about to undergo just as many changes. Here are some tips for helping your partner through pregnancy and mentally preparing yourself as well. Be understanding of her changing body and hormone levels and adjust accordingly. Eat healthy too. No one wants to watch their partner eat an ooey gooey treat when they're having a salad. Make her feel special. The baby is getting a lot of attention, so let her know she's doing a great job. Listen. Sometimes she may just want to talk about her fears or needs. Listen and help in any way you can, even if that means putting the crib together at midnight. Attend birthing classes. This is where you'll learn all about the process of having a baby and tips for handling labor and delivery. All right, that concludes Section 2. Congratulations on the new arrival. Let's now talk about ways to stay green after the baby. Going organic can be a life change that helps you lead to health and longevity. The benefits of clearing your body of toxins and pesticides is not only a great thing for your baby, it's also a wonderful choice for your entire family. You can stay green after baby by choosing to cloth diaper, buy organic cotton baby cloths, make your baby food straight from the farm. Let's take a closer look at each of these areas. One of the best ways you can help the environment is by using cloth diapers. Did you know that each child in their diaper years will use about 10,000 plastic diapers? All of those dirty diapers add up to 30% of the non-biodegradable trash in the landfills each year. That really stinks! Instead, try using cloth diapers to reduce your carbon footprint. Cloth diapers are essentially comfy diapers that are reusable. After baby goes, you just switch out your liner, flush the evidence, and launder the dirty liner. The only thing you need is a special laundry detergent to wash them and changeable sizes for when baby grows. There are many cute and convenient options on the market today. It's a great way to go green for baby's bottom and for the earth. Next, I want to talk about breastfeeding. Colostrum will be your baby's first nourishment from breastfeeding. It is a yellowish, sticky breast milk that's produced at the end of pregnancy and should be given to the baby within the first hour after birth. It's packed with vitamins, minerals, and antibodies that your baby needs. Breast milk can reduce the number of infectious diseases. It can help reduce sudden infant death syndrome. And it can also reduce the risk of a baby having asthma or allergies and allow baby to bond with its mother. We are already equipped with our best option for feeding baby without leaving behind a carbon footprint. Breastfeeding offers a slew of benefits for mother and baby and is recommended by the World Health Organization and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The World Health Organization recommends breastfeeding throughout the first six months and then supplementing with breastfeeding until the age of two. If you're having trouble latching your baby, seek help from a lactation consultant. The perfect timeline for feeding your baby is up to you and your baby, though most organizations recommend feeding for six months and then supplementing with breastfeeding for up to two years. 
This helps supplement the vitamins and nutrients that baby isn't getting from solid food. Remember, you don't give your baby solid foods, like rice, until they're around six months of age and have been cleared by your doctor. Everyone is equipped with everything they need to breastfeed, but sometimes mothers have a hard time figuring out the process. It's best to speak with a lactation consultant if you're having any trouble latching. The lactation specialist will recommend different positions to try and ways to let go of the anxiety surrounding breastfeeding. Breastfeeding benefits mom by helping mother bond with baby, reduces the risk of breast and ovarian cancers, reduces the risk of having osteoporosis later in life, helps families save money, no bottles to warm helps mom save time. Helps mom lose weight by burning an extra 500 calories per day. And reduces the risk of postpartum depression and anxiety. After breastfeeding, it's time to switch the bottle. Some bottles contain a BPA plastic that could leak potential harmful chemicals into your baby's milk. When you're finished breastfeeding, or you decide to feed your baby with a bottle, choose BPA-safe bottles that don't contain any harmful chemicals in the plastic, or choose to use glass baby bottles instead. And never, ever heat your baby bottles in the microwave. This can also leak harmful chemicals into your baby's milk. There are even baby feeding utensils made straight from corn. Yes, corn. Never heat up baby's bottle in the microwave. Try glass bottles instead. Organic products are available. There are even baby feeding utensils made straight from corn. Yes, corn. A lot of people forget that our skin is our biggest organ, and what you put on it can seep into the skin and harm us. There have been tons of backlash lately from some of the bigger baby companies using chemicals in their baby products that may be hazardous to our health. In response, many organic baby companies have created baby wash, oils, soaps, lotions, and shampoo made from all natural and organic ingredients. Make sure to read the label and avoid any products that have fragrances, parabens, phthalates, formaldehyde, and dioxane. Going green is a reciprocal experience that requires us to give and receive help from others. One of the best ways is to donate old baby toys, clothes, or other items so they don't end up in the landfill. This will help others save money and provide cost-effective options for managing their expenses. Besides, they'll need to buy all those organic strawberries. Many churches or community groups will set up kid clothing sales by season several times throughout the year. Try a clothing swap where you can change your baby's clothes for the next size up. It's a great place to go to swap out clothes and find the next size up. Babies grow out of clothing so fast that it's almost not worth buying them new. If you don't have a clothing swap in your area, make a donation at your local Goodwill shop or give them away to a family that you know needs them. Before we conclude, the GBRI team wanted to give a shout out to five amazing moms who have taken going green to a whole new level. Taken from an article in Fit Pregnancy magazine called Five Simple Steps to Going Green for Your Baby, these moms have learned how to make a great green difference. Lisa Mitchell is a mom to two girls, Lucy and Carolyn. She wanted to teach her girls how to make a difference in the world, so she founded Recycleholics, a company that sells 100% compostable bags to schools, grocery stores, restaurants, and government agencies to use without harming the environment. She then founded another company called Recology Solutions that helps teach people how to compost and recycle.
Jennifer Cliff always loved eating locally grown food, but when her daughter, Parker, was born, she took her love of local to a bigger scale. Along with her husband, Darren, Cliff founded Edible Sacramento, one of 40 publications that focuses on eating local and supporting community farmers. Andrea Jones is a mom to a little boy named Kyle. She began eating organic during pregnancy, but was shocked to find that the FDA didn't have safety limits for the use of chemicals in canned food, even organic. Most of the cans tested had high levels of bisphenol A, a BPA, a chemical that can cause infertility issues and has been linked to certain types of cancer. She continues to fight for tougher regulations for canned food and spreads the word about making food from scratch. Hairstylist and entrepreneur Cozy Friedman owns the salons called Cozy's Cuts for Kids and created the So Cozy line of hair products. After her two sons were born, she started thinking about products that she was putting on their hair. She noticed even natural products contained harmful parabens and knew she needed to pay attention to her own line. She immediately began creating herbal hair care products that were much safer for kids to use. When her son came down with a rash, Tomalch refused to believe it was due to eczema, like the doctor insisted. Instead, she found out that her home contained toxic chemicals. There were flame retardants in her baby's mattress and carcinogens in the baby bottles. And four weeks after she replaced the items with all natural products, her son's rash was completely gone. In response, she got together with her mom friends, Beth Burkett and actress Solie Moon Fry. She opened The Little Seed an L.A.-based baby boutique that carries eco-friendly products to the masses. GBRI wants to know about you. How are you making a difference as a super green mom? Let us know and we'll share your story with the world and help make our planet the best place to live. That concludes our course. We've included links to additional resources for your reference in your handout. I hope you enjoyed this session. What's your story? We would love to hear your comments and feedback, along with new ideas. If you are taking this course for continuing education, please take the quiz. Listed here are the course objectives. By now, we have met each of the objectives listed here except the last one. The last objective is a team effort between all of us. We hope you will apply the lessons learned and spread the knowledge to others and be a part of the UN 2030 Agenda. If you are interested to learn more about the United Nations 2030 Agenda, GBRI has prepared free course videos that are available on our website. The URL is provided on this slide as well as in your handouts. God could not be everywhere, and therefore, he created mothers. Thank you once again.